Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Talking shit Tuesday. That's right. We are talking shit with the faithful, the YDBT Amory, the people that make it all happen. Thank you very much for everyone that has joined the Patreon lately. I've had about 20 or 30 guys join the Patreon in about three or four days. I really appreciate that. Tons of questions being asked, trying to save people time, trouble, stuff like that. But remember, guys, the Patreon is not somewhere where you can get tuning help outside of the ticket system for a Lund tune. If you had, if you're Lund tuned and you had like an issue, I can work with you, but I'm not going to go like, Hey, let me hit up your tune through Patreon. That's just not something that I want to do. I want to basically outline builds, save you some trouble, talk about theories, whatever you want to do in terms of, you know, outlying your build. But generally I'm not going to really dip my toes into the Lund racing waters. I will always tell you to work with your tuner today on today's, on today's show, we're going to talk about built, not bought. <clears throat> there has been a couple of posts online that have since been removed, which I thought was kind of funny, about people kind of jabbing at others that bought an already vetted vehicle or have their cars built by somebody else, and then maybe somebody else, look, unless you built the car yourself from the ground up, you cannot say you built it yourself. I'm sorry. If you didn't do the cage yourself, the back half yourself, the rear end yourself, the motor yourself, the trans yourself, the turbo kit yourself, the tuning yourself, I'm sorry if you got anything done outside of that, you can almost say you bought something, but I, you know, I, I know what a lot of people are trying to do. They're basically trying to say, hey, you're just buying cars that are fast already, throwing your sauce on and do the thing. I've always said that I don't subscribe to that way of thinking because... I'd rather be um, free to make money. I want to make money. Like the Fairmont was shipped to Maryland to get the roll cage done. The Corvette was shipped to Pennsylvania to get the transmission done. While those cars are gone, I'm making money. I'm not going to sit in a garage for 12 hours, 13 hours, 14 hours every day and sit there and hammer something out just to have the pride in myself to say, look, I built this one thing when I can be a project manager and basically have my hand in five or six different fires messing around and basically getting you as much content as possible. If I was building everything myself from the ground up, I'd give you guys one project a year and that wouldn't really be conducive to making money and giving guys any kind of content. But I want to know what you guys think about the built not bought argument. From what I can tell, if you are slower, but you built it yourself, at least you can hang your hat on the fact that you said you built it yourself. And then you can then make an excuse that says the guy that has the most money is going to always be faster, which is generally the case. Do you guys think every pro mod driver built anything ever? Do you think a pro mod guy that drives a pro mod car, do you think he built that chassis? He put the rear end together? He put the motor together? He put the fuel system together? No. Most of those cars are bought. But no one sees those guys and say they suck because they bought their cars. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about also a picture I saw that I don't know that it, it's real or not. And if it's real, I'm going to stop talking about Murder Nova and his F-150 forever. But I need to verify if this picture is real. Because if it is real, I'm punching down. And I will not talk about Homeboy because I feel sorry if this picture is real. We'll talk about that and a lot more on today's Talking Shit, but not before Mr. Bill O'Reilly says hello to people here. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. Oh my God, it sucks. Absolutely. PMAS, Nick James the PMAS sent me a PMAS called their intake for the 13 Mustang. We're going to be doing some testing on it, but not before we do some testing with a tire, no filter. Then we'll move on to the PMAS stuff. I'll try to get you a jam-packed video sometime this week. He didn't have Pormit, have Pormit.com. They have sold over 20 Amory cups. Hopefully you guys can go over there, check them out, get his wife rolling on making some cups. It's a good time and represent the uh, the show. Park Farm, Park Farm.com got me a deck lift coming also for the 13 Mustang. You gotta love places like the Park Farm. Real weird, hard to find parts for your Mustang or late model muscle car. That's the place to go to. Two out of solution, Rami I haven't heard shit from him. I hope he's okay. Caliber told me he finished the Corvette transmission today. Hopefully, have it on the ground and mobile in a couple of days. Bella! 
Damien Borrato in Miami, making the best wheels on the planet, and MFP, MFP of Australia, MFP, I think it's Main Force Performance, so look them up on Google, Main Force Performance, MainForcePerformance.com, check them out, they got the crank supports, they, they're making shit for Australian cars, billet everything, billet radiator covers, billet radiator hold down shits, everything made out of billet. Leon Phelps, Zeus did it, Travis, Monty540, Joe Swiss, Monkey Mock, Dixon, B. Lavesh, Reek and 5 were the first people to say hello. One of our RTR, Rocky Rocky, I'm Hoax Hello, John Jones, 2000 MCR, Whipple Cripple, John Jones again, Corp Fred Cow, TJ Sikorsky, Craig Bill, Robo Style, Whipple Cripple, EPA, Dalton Dale, that dude, Chris, Jack Stan, Manic 5 Ignacio Ramirez, Paul Pontiu, Paul Pontiu again, going soft. Said, going soft podcast. I don't know who he is, but oh, <laughs> Fuck. I love it. Uh, Rich, Ray Ray, 2JZ, Fox, Body, D-Rock, Fox, The Wolf, Naldo, GT, Mustang, El Patron de la Cerveza, Gallo Bravo, Drew, Drew Peacock in the house, Donkey, Mac, Big <laughs> Baby Daddy 96, Baby Daddy 96 again, Phil Fez, 5 way Josh, Mark Christensen, Drew Peacock again, Craig Bill, JD Swag, Bossa Nova, Second Shift Racing, F-150, SF-50, Big Jake, let's get all the way down to the bottom, YDBT Groupies in the house, Jay Walker trying to friend request me on Facebook, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Why do you want a friend request me on Facebook, bro? I love you. But come on. We don't do that shit. We're grown-ass men here. I don't need to be chit-chatting with motherfuckers on Facebook. Weird. Pay for my attention. Patreon. Uh, Manic 5-0. Dylan. Mark Christensen. Recon 5-0. TR301. Stusher. DNA Hap Formers. Andy Black Betty. Anthony. Jonathan. Eddie. Royal Coyote. I'm Hunk So Low. EPA. I'm Hunk So Low again. Gregory Upmitch. Dixon. Ray Williams. Dirt Snake. Anthony. And ESS 5.0. Do you guys give two fucking shits when you're at a track and you see a car run a number and you go, I hope he built it because if he bought it, I would totally think it's gay. No. You go, badass car. It's fast. Cool shit. And then if you happen to talk to him in the uh, staging lanes or in his pit, you go, hey, tell me about this car. Well, I built it myself. You go, wow, that's a lot of work. So you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as a guy that's super talented and has a lot of time. And to me, that's a bit of a negative. Highly productive people don't have time to build cars. They just don't. They do the, the small work, the little, you know, little things here and there. Maybe the fuel system, maybe the, the hot side, maybe the cold side. But when it comes to the big boy stuff, the suspension, the uh, cage, the motor, the transmission, generally, generally, that's left to the experts. Okay, and at a certain level, I would almost want a guy to go to the experts to build the car properly. Case in point, if you bought a 14 second car and then you built the 14 second car, okay, I guess you could say something about that. But if the 14 second car is a 305 TPI Camaro with a 10 bolt or a 12 bolt, and then your 14 second car is an Altima, I think you're both gay. Um, the guy that built a 14 second car is probably gayer because he built a very slow car. And that seems to be the overlying theme of the built guys. The built guys generally build a less quality vehicle and maybe not up to par as to what the bought guy is able to afford. I want to be the bought guy. Okay, I don't care about racing, and I told you guys in terms of racing, I don't care. I don't respect any motherfucker that races. I don't look up to anybody that races at a at high level. I just go, that's racing. I'm just, I, I just, I saw no money there. I saw no one that is my peer, someone that I, I look at and I go, I respect you. I just go, there's a bunch of guys that race. Do I want to fuck with it? And honestly, not really. I just want to test it to and be left alone to my own devices and talk some shit online and build your uh, and guide your builds and be the happiest cat on the problem. But to be in there with the shit talking Twitter finger motherfuckers that in person go, hey, buddy. Hey, well, what's up, man? I hope you have a good race today, man. Wait, wasn't he the motherfucker talking all this shit on Facebook saying all this tough guy stuff? And then when you finally see him, you're like, eh, that's a fat guy. It's always a fat guy or a skinny fat guy. And then you're like, you feel bad because you got get all you get all riled up for nothing. And then they're all nice and fucking person. So I always thought that was a goofy way of behaving in the racing culture. Talk all the shit online, in person. You see this guy has the, the, the loosest sleeves and the tightest fucking shirt on the gut area. And I'm like, I, okay, y- y'all ain't my peers. Y'all, y'all somewhere else. So I can now sit back and just talk about the bullshit that happens without having any attachment to it. 
So there's been a lot of built, not bought stuff going around. And I thought, well, who gives a shit? It, when you're all racing, generally, you have a motor builder, you have a trans builder, you have a chassis builder, and you finance the operation. If you do it all, you probably don't have as a good as an operation as the people that bought their stuff. Not to say that you're not respected, not to say that you're not talented, but at the end of the day, somebody that has the funds and the money to buy or at least contract the best in the market to come together with one project <clears throat> and become a project manager and have the best outcome possible, those guys tend to have a tighter, better program than someone that does it 100% by themselves. Just based on a, a collective knowledge. Because if you don't go outside of your comfort zone and learn stuff, look, Alec Bledsoe's a lot younger than me. I respect the shit out of that guy because I've learned so much from him. And I'm not, I don't have this ego that says, well, he's younger than me, he don't know shit. No. He's been around Billy Badass shit most of his life. A lot of people reach out to him for shock advice and then all of a sudden post on Facebook that they fucked with the shocks. Mind blown about crazy shit that happens out there. So the built guy does not get any less respect from me, but maybe I understand your thought process. Now, if you have always done everything yourself and you've always built your cars yourself, I understand maybe the hatred or the envy of disliking somebody that just pays someone to do it they get in the car and they have a generally successful program but don't you aspire to be that guy like why do you do this why do you build cars why do you build cars to go fast one to win races two to gain notoriety three maybe to gain some business and eventually you're gonna get to the point where you are the bought guy Right? Because if you gain business and notoriety, you, you, you become busy. And about the last thing you can do if you're actually worth anything is to sit there and build a car on your own and waste time on it as opposed to making money. So every guy that is a built guy wants to become a bought guy. Because why are you building it in the first place? To gain business, notoriety, and maybe get some income off of it to eventually be able to afford nicer things. Like when you see someone like a um, Craig Walls. Craig Walls saw this nitrous fox body hanging around somewhere. And he's like, well, it needs a lot of work, but I'm starting off with a really good program. So he has a either a Rossler 400 or a Reed case or an m, &M 400. He has a Billet Noonan, a uh, small block Ford, did the cage, did some Holly stuff, but generally, the motor was contracted out. I'm sure the trans was contracted out. He did a lot of the cage work. And Holly, is he a built or a bought guy? Right? So I looked at that car and I go, this bitch is bad. I never, th I never thought to myself, well, did you build it yourself, buddy? Because if you didn't build it yourself, I don't care about this car. I think it's gay and you're gay. No. I go, dude, badass car. Nothing wrong with this thing. I think it's pretty badass. So I'm wondering... Why it's bleeding into this, the racer mentality when all racers buy something. I, I hardly think that racers at a certain level build their own shit. And if they do, that's their business. Like that's what they do for a business. But if you got a regular job or a job on the side, or if you're a high-end guy, surgeon, doctor, sales guy, what have you, or own a business, the last thing you want to do is wrench on shit, weld on shit, because your time is money. We'll talk about it. Do you respect a built guy over a bought guy when in actuality, the built guy probably wants to become a bought guy? Now, the picture that I'm going to reference here, I don't know if it's real. So this was posted on April Fool's, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface that, that it was posted on April Fool's. But if I'm not mistaken, um, there was a Facebook post of Murder Nova's truck on a rack. And it says, the guy from Fuel Tech said the truck was too loud, so we put an exhaust on it. And guys, if this picture is real, I will never make fun of Murder Nova again. Because, um, oh, um, uh, you know, if this picture is real, I will never make fun of Homeboy again. I will never mention him on the show. I'll say good luck to you, brother. Vaya con Dios. Espero que todo te vaya bien. Because, my God, what the fuck?
is happening over there. So I can't verify that picture is real or not. I hope it's fake because it was posted on April Fool's. But sheesh, I'd rather open header that bits. Let's get to the paid questions if there are any. Da, 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 da. One, one paid question. And then we'll get to the general audience and we'll talk a little shit on this Talking Shit Tuesday. Haik Boya John says, yo, Alex, long time since I saw you live. I wanted a quick opinion on suspension brand. I want to go back to a street setup, but I still want something good. You recommend UPR or Stita for control arms for a 14 GT. Now, th- let's not get it twisted, gentlemen. There's only certain amount of designs that you, you know, or, or that you can get away with with a certain mounting point, right? So at the end of the day, you want to get maybe, if you're going to go heim joint, you want the company that has the best heim joints that make the least amount of sound, right? So you can go, or you can go just urethane mount, urethane stuff, and, and who cares about it? You can go tubular, you can whatever, you box, whatever you want to do. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be honest with you guys. You can put UP, we went 730s with UPR upper and lowers on a regular, regular style 88 on the Grey Goose. So I don't think it's that important if we went 730s with fucking UPR upper and lowers, urethane stuff. For my money, Alejandro Flores' money, I want these. Um, These are the Maximum Motorsports uh, 11 to 14 control arms. The Maximum Motorsports 11 to 14 control arms are fucking badass. They're on my GT500. Um, 11 to 14 control arms. I think it's these guys. Let me check. This is a CJ Pony Parts link. No, nope, not not the right link. Um, <clears throat> boy, do they make them? I'm looking around, and I don't, I don't know if they make them or not. Uh, these are too curved. I mean, why are they so fucking curved? But it looks like they have Heim joint, uh, really good quality Heim joint uh, control arms. Anyway, they look like this. They're, they they basically look like this for 11 to 14. Okay. Oh my fucking god, you fucking assholes. So basically, they look like that. Um, these I think are urethane, but the ones I have are Heim joint, badass stuff, maximum motorsports, get their drop brackets also. If they still make them, you can also use, um, team Z, UPR, Steeda. It does not matter at the end of the day. It's whatever brand you think looks cool underneath. The deficiency is going to be, I guess, in the Heim joint quality. Some of them are looser. Some of them are noisy. Some of them make more, make more clicking noises, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter all that much. Bro, those U-bolts are about to come apart. He needs Sam, the polisher, on it. People who discredit a built car are hating because it's badass and they might be able to afford it. Right, full prism. I don't know about that exhaust. If that is a true, if someone can verify, if that's an actual exhaust that's underneath Sean Murder Nova's F-150, I, I'm, I'm punching down. It's it's like it's like calling double dribble when you're playing basketball with certain people, and I, I just think I I'm coming across like a bully. You know what I mean? Craig Walls says the car I bought was legit. I'm actually rebuilding the four link right now as we speak. Just updating all the rear suspension to accommodate sub four second eighth mile. So you need better shocks, better shock mounting points, right? You probably have mentors underneath the bits. You probably need a whole bunch of stuff to be able to separate. You're probably going with that wishbone shit, you know? So if you are doing stuff like that, that'd be cool to see. Kirk Wall says, was a hell of a lot cheaper than updating my X275 car to compete in limited drag radio. And that's what people don't understand. People go, wait a minute. Why'd you buy a car? The bitch was done. And if Craig Walls, who seems to have a little dough, can work uh, with a car that goes runs 275 and, how, and wants to go into LDR, he's like, to update my car to, from 275 to LDR, it's going to be 60000 bucks. But if I can buy this rolling chassis for 30, throw a motor and update the cage a little bit, I'm up money. And I'd still, and I have a whole car as opposed to cutting up and updating my X275 car. And do, do you think people look at Craig Walls and go, ah, ha, 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 built, not bought, junk. No, they don't do that. And the ones that do don't know anything or they're just hating. I look at it from an outsider's perspective because I am not in racing. I think it's all gay, but I, I guess I can understand the, the envy 
because of course I'd love to be able to buy a car that has run numbers, stuff my power plant in it, and then be within a tenth or two of like that particular combo's world record. And people go, where the fuck did you come from? Like you haven't cut your teeth in this. Motherfuckers have been at it for a long fucking time. You know who also are like the worst haters are fucking four valve guys that think a Predator motor is not a Coyote. You want to talk about some of the dumbest, densest sons of bitches on the fucking planet that will literally sit there and say, it's a GT500 block. Sorry, it came in a GT350 also. And Ford themselves, Ford, the people who make the product, call it a Coyote block that came in a GT500 and a GT350 and a Raptor. So you can't say it's a Shelby block because Shelby doesn't make blocks, asshole! Shelby makes nothing but badges. Shelby makes nothing but body kits. Saying Shelby, the allure went away in the fucking 60s. Done. See you. Because if you say Shelby is badass, then the Omni, the fucking Dakota, the fucking, uh, what the fuck was that thing called? That piece of shit Daytona that Dodge made. Then that's as badass as the other stuff. So again, if Ford calls it a Coyote, it's a Coyote. 5458 guys are the biggest homosexuals on the planet. Because a little Coyote is raping their shit. Motherfuckers need 60 pounds of boost to run what a coyote runs at 45 properly built. And they're mad about it because it's a hodgepodge of parts. I'm sorry. It's all in the same family. It bolts up. Ford calls it coyote. It's a coyote. Stop saying GT500 like GT500 is separate than anything else. It's a fucking Ford. And it's a Mustang. That's right. A GT500 is a fucking Mustang, asshole. No, it's not. It's a Shelby. Shelby don't make shit. Shelby don't make shit. God damn it. I love the people that think that Shelby has this like some kind of like um, um, allure. Like it fucking matters nowadays. A super snake is a GT with a Whipple kit. Think about that. Th think about that. A super snake is a GT with a Whipple fucking kit. Could you imagine... Could you imagine Carol Shelby? <laughs> Where are you, Carol? <laughs> Where are you, Carol? I got to find him. Carol Shelby must be rolling over in his grave right now when he sees someone throwing um, when he's throwing a, a, a whipple on a GT and calling it a Shelby. I mean... It, well, time to take credit for vehicles I never had anything to do with. Where's my chewing gum? Exactly. <laughs> Wow, that was pretty good. Does he have it? Do I have any more? It's like Alpaca, the R2D2, Danger Zone. No, that's it. That's all I have from. Uh, that's all I have from Mr. Shelby himself. Five eight dudes getting diddied by Coyote guys. Alex makes me cry when he's out there shitting on my slow GT five hundred. I own one, and I I think it's it's a it's an okay car. Like the only reason, guys, listen, this would make so much sense. It hurts. I should I should just stick a Coyote in that car, right? I should take the Shelby, get the long block rebuilt, have it 12 to 1 compression, badass heads, L&M cams, sell it for 18000 bucks somewhere, get a illuminator in the fucking GT500, department of boost kit, throw a blower on top of that bitch, and run that 8 with a Coyote. It will do it. No fucking problem. But why don't I do it? Because eventually I want to sell that car. And homosexual Shelby guys... Would go, oh, you stuck a coyote in it? You stuck a better, lighter, higher revving, more power potential coyote in a Shelby? You're stupid. Yeah, I made it better. It will bring down the value to Shelby guys. And I want to sell that car to a Shelby guy one day. And when he sees a big boat anchor of a 5.8 on the bitch, he'll go, oh my God, that's the best motor ever to come in Ford. I can't believe, you know, why, why would anyone stick a coyote in there over... <laughs> Where's Shelby? I, I'm looking for Shelby clips, and I can't find them. Oh, here it is. <laughs> why did I move the folder way the fuck over there? <laughs> Blows my mind. Unreal.
The best vehicle I ever owned was an automatic 65 twin supercharged Cobra. I could stroke your dick while going 200 miles per hour. No problem. I mean, you know, he is not wrong. Mr. Shelby, absolutely. Can I get a super snake with a VMP? VMP Pitbull? Wasn't the 2011 350 just a coyote with a blower and a gay body kit? Lee does a lid. Four performance has a lid. VMP has a lid. When is Lund Racing getting a lid? I'm waiting for my lid. Hodgepodge, as if they don't use the timing components from different year models. But Alex, my dash was signed by Carol Shelby. Have you seen on three's new twin turbo mid-mount kit? If not, it looks like straight ghetto crappy copy of the Aldo Welds kit. And again, it probably makes power. And this is this is the problem with that stuff. If a company that you know straight rips off a product, makes a mid-mount shit based off of an Aldo shit, I'd be pissed off if I was Aldo and I wouldn't respect that company ever. But this is the problem in the coyote community. Y'all motherfuckers don't give a fuck as long as it's cheap. Y'all go, y'all guys rep VMS wheels, rears only. Y'all, y'all motherfuckers put trompeta intakes on your shit. You don't care about a quality product. That's why I kind of left that group behind. Cause I'm like, nah, these are not my peers. I'm good. If you swap a coyote with a Whipple, it'll make it a Shelby 1000. You're right. I prefer built, not bought, even though I could never afford to even buy a bought one. You're going to have to sell the GT500 for 30 k if it has an illuminator, unfortunately. But Alex, Vevum kills demons. <laughs> Stop. You know, I just paid for this shit. 540 get built and I still get smacked by a Gen 2 Coyote. Still not as bad as Terminator, guys. Believe it or not, they're getting there. GT500 guys are getting there because the GT500 is now up old outdated tech, known and verified to be less robust than a Coyote, known and verified, I, vo I own both guys, I own both, I can absolutely go eights with my S197 a lot easier than I could go with a GT500. The GT500 requires the motor to come out and do stuff to it, whereas the Gen 1, if I'm, if I'm okay, I might be able to squeeze off an eight with a stock trans in it, with proper tuning in the 85, just because the motor's that good. Obviously, it's going to eventually fling something because it's a Gen 1. But if it was a Gen 2, oh, no problem. No problem. A fucking 5.8? That bitch is stressed the fuck out trying to make that car go 950s. LS guys will claim that truck engines aren't LS engines because they're designated LQ for LY6. I pull my hair out when people, whenever, whenever guys refer to 67 Fastbacks as Eleanor. Shelby guys want that secret sauce. Um, Justin, oh, fuck me. Jay, I don't have anything against Justin Starkey, but you got to understand, I can't go out there and just like put the shit that you guys put up there and say it because again, I don't have anything against him. I just, I just see certain things happening and I go, eh, and I comment on them, but that sounds like a personal attack and I'm not looking to do that to the dude. Y'all can do it all you want and I'll, you know, whatever, but I'm not looking to do that. I know a company that ripped off other companies. <coughs> yes. Pro Charger. And, you know, people say, no, they had a crank support way before MFP Australia. Interesting how they didn't have a crank support at all for Coyote stuff until MFP of Australia showed them their kit. Mammoth says, I've copped enough to realize my C6Z will probably never be as fast as my boosted Gen 3. Maybe if I get that small loan from P. Diddy, I'll get there. I'd rather be bought guy and I'll keep turning wrenches until then. Droopycock says, make sure you list all the parts on your 13 build so us built guys can copy you for the same results. So I thought about it. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I definitely, I have the people, the resources, and the tuning to be able to make a, that, that car a Coyote. I could throw the 4.5 Whipple on it with a Department of Boost kit. Department of Boost sells a Coyote to uh, GT500 bolt pattern uh, blower you know, intercooler, and I could use everything else, and I could sell the long block, get a, get a uh, Gen 2 harness or Gen 1 harness, put it in the car, tune it like a coyote with locked cams, lock the cam somewhere, and run that eight tonight. Same T56, same clutch, same everything. Boom, just slap that bitch on. That would be the smart thing to do. And what's an illuminator? 11,000 bucks? And you don't think that's going to make a 1,000 rear wheel horsepower like nothing? Absolutely. But why don't I do that? Because I want that I want the motor that came with the car in it because Psycho Shelby guys are going to want the motor that came with the car and I can probably ask 60000 for the car after it runs the 890. I enjoy it for a summer or two driving around, put a normal diff in it, and just live my life. Tried to explain this to my buddy and he learned the hard way. A built 5.4 with a huge Whipple losing to stock motor coyotes. 
And they don't understand that the displacement matters fuck all in this situation. It's about the cylinder head design. It's about the revving capabilities. GT500s are fucking done at 73, 7400 RPMs. If you're psycho enough to rev it to 8000, good luck. They're just, not, it's just, it just revs. Unless you have the right blower, right cam, blah. The coyotes just get up there. Wee! 8,000, give me more. No problem. Crazy stuff. Do you think the introduction of VCT was a saving grace for Ford Motors in the terms of competitive performance since you could have control of download torque with the ability to rev high? I don't think it was the game changer, but I think it definitely helped the smaller displacement coyote motor compete with cars that it should not be competing with don't you guys understand that a 302 cubic inch yes the cylinder heads are huge i get it those cars are competing with lt ls at corvettes that it should not be competing against it shouldn't and the vct definitely helped but i think gen 2 architecture the valve design the cylinder head design the revving capabilities a little bit of everything kind of like culminated my issue mainly was in, in the 10 r80 stuff i think they they had an opportunity to have let's say a 6 r80 with the gen 3 motor and do that instead of the 10 r80 yes the 10 r80 is a bit of a cheat code for roll racing specifically but it just doesn't hold big power and i think it's just too many shifts to be honest with you lund racing's gray goose shifts once launches in second third gear no lockup converter second third run 660s does not launch in first so that kind of dispels the myth that if you have enough power that you need all those gears i'm sure to know if dude paid his bill yet what dude oh so on that front jared wells i've i've had a lot of time to think about it i know the answer is going to be no based on this and last week's uh let's just say i i there have been more people that have had issues and more people hear the same thing. So I'm like, you know what? I know it's going to be no. I know it's going to be no. Because what I'm going to want is a certain amount of money. But I don't want to be paid to be to shut up. So I'm probably not going to ask for anything and just not recommend. But not blast either. You know what I mean? Like, how do I best uh, use this experience? This, this education that I received? It's probably best not to ask for money because I'm not going to get it. And it's probably be best. And if anyone ever asks me about motor builders, I simply steer them to fast forward race engines or an illuminator. Again, guys, you want to make 1100 illuminator, or a, if you want to, if, if you don't like the illuminator and you want some sleeve, you get a stage three FFRE motor from Real Street, and you're done. Bada bing, bada boom. Or if you want to go Billy Badass stuff, you talk to them and say, okay, I want to do what Senior Brett and all the other guys are doing, and then. You know, you're going to pay the money, get aluminum rods in the bitch, Winberg crank, the whole nine yards. You're going to pay good money. But again, when it comes to Coyote engine builders, it's Ford and FFRE, in my opinion. So the best thing that people were to ask me, hey, Alex, what do you think about 5458 engine builders? L&M. Like L&M. That's it. Done. I don't care about anybody else. I don't care about who you know, what you know. This guy did that. L&M. Done. With lock cams and correct valve covers... 90% uh, of the people wouldn't even be able to tell. No, they'll be able to tell. They'll be able to tell right away uh, that it's not a, a 5.4. The 5.4 takes up the whole fucking engine bay. May he had the chance to get a Coyote 2 because it was swapped in 3 valve. Anyone want to trade a built motor 12 GT500 for a Gen 2? Shelby Purist ruined GT500s for sure. When I get my 2020 GT500, I want nothing to do with those weirdos. I'm happy to say I built my whole truck engine, trans rear end, fuel system, stand only to you. At the end of the day, it was a way for me to learn without wasting a bunch of money. But Johnny Trans... Didn't you waste time? And isn't time money? Knowing what I know now, I would have never done the work on the GT500 myself because I know what I have to look forward to when it comes to putting it back together. And it's a month, a month, off and on, working on the car, remembering where I left off, a lot of, I mean, dehydration on the ground, even though I got the quick jacks, a dehydration on the ground, busted knuckles, uh, issues, uh, and heaven forbid anything happens with that motor. I'd quit. If anything's wrong with this motor after I put it back together, uh, for sale, and everything's gone, I'm going to part it out. I'm not doing this the third time. It's crazy talk. So knowing what I know now, I would have just taken my car, dropped it off to a shop that is competent, 
good luck. And say, put it together. I don't have the time, the patience, the wherewithal. I'm just done. I, I would have done it all. And I would have just made money and just paid the shop to do it. I wouldn't know what 8,000 RPMs is with my Whipple tune cucking my red line at 6,700. I'm comfortable with where it is, not a competition, a used vehicle. Got it. Someone paid and said, been a while since I've been here, still running your tune. Love the Street Alpha conversation. You know what's happening with the Street Alpha stuff? It's happening. It, it, it's like spikes, levels out. Then there's a slow rise again. It's kind of weird. And the subscribers have gone up commensurate with how much the Street Alpha podcast goes up. I talked to Alec Bledsoe for a good hour and a half the other day or an hour. Good to catch up with the dude, see what's going on. He's extremely busy right now. And we talked about him potentially being on the podcast, but I think he's just too busy to fuck around with it right now. Uh, how much to sponsor you to quit hating on drifting? Co car, dude. Co car, dude. Tell me the positives about drifting. Tell me the positives about drifting. Tell me what is. Tell me what when you go dr to a drift event, what makes you go, oh yeah! Like, what makes you do that in a drift event? After the eighth car does a slide and takes a corner a certain way, what part of drifting makes you go, woo? It's the shrooms, the weed, a fucking acid, the herps, uh, the dehydration. There is nothing, nothing that I look at in a drift event and go, I want to pay $20 and stand in the hot sun and smell all this smoke to see a Nissan 370, a 240SX, a clapped out Fox body, almost hit a bottle that's up against the wall. There's nothing exciting for me. And people go, but what's so exciting about drag racing? You're right. You're right. It's generally boring. But when I see a car launch, a 3,000 pound car, cut a 1060 foot, run the eighth in the low fours, and run the quarter in the sixes with a 6R80, three link, 31, 3,200 pound car, I think that's pretty impressive. Drifting is rolling burnouts, yawn. Those Shelby purists are what keeping the value of them high. Yes, they don't race, but they're preserving the cars for us. Drifting is like seeing two dudes kissing. No matter how often you see it, it just doesn't look right. Quick question, says Mike May. I'm ordering ESSG3 for my manual Gen 3, and I want to make good power on the 100 millimeter pulley the way to go. Mike, what fuel are you going to use? You, you need to know, you need, you need to, you missed out a lot of shit. <laughs> a lot of shit. Get rid of that red bump on your lip when we quit trolling. Get rid of that red bump on your lip, then we will quit trolling drifting. Here we go, another, another, another turvy. When the drifter smacked the fuck out of that wall. Drifting is like Diddy and his boyfriend. One positive can't catch herpes twice. I mean, there's there's up there's the booty and the lips. So there's one and two. So technically you can catch it twice. The action is the juice says people still hate on MMR, but my MMR rush shut up. Get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, I'm not gonna even finish that comment. Drifting doesn't have wheelies. My daughter's boy be friend? Best friend? Boyfriend? Best friend, boyfriend? Set, wants me to teach him how to... Okay, it's a boyfriend. What? Who the fuck puts befriend? David Hale. He wants me to teach him how to drift, and I said he's gay and can't date her if he keeps up with that shit. Okay, you're doing good by him. Did you look at the bar angle? when I The way I slid in? It's fun as hell. Lots of kamadei. <laughs> Running doors at 8,500 RPM? Pure bliss? What the fuck did you just say? It's fun as hell. Tons of kamadei. T-O-M-A-D-A-E-I-E. Kamadei. Didn't your phone turn red when you typed that? Like, didn't your phone go, okay, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. What the fuck did it autocorrect it to? I'm going to try that. Camaraderie. Com. I even fucked up the spelling and it spelled it correctly. Wow, I, I I can't I can't fuck it up. Like, didn't the bottom of the phone say, "Bro, you're you're retarded"? <laughs> so you want door to door, eighty five hundred RPMs at forty miles an hour? That's exciting. Sliding. I'm sorry, drifting is gay 
and it is not racing because it is not who gets to the finish line first. It's it's akin to Australian burnout. That's gay too. That's gay as fuck. I'm sorry. What's so cool about that? Absolutely nothing. If you're 12 years old, I get it. I understand it if you're 12 years old. Whoa, cars sliding around and doing burnout? Cool, dad. But if you're a grown-ass man, you go, that thing probably needs to get rebuilt. Rear end's fucked up. Drive shaft's fucked up. Trans is fucked up. Colt, he just, just burned the car down. He's got to rebuild it for 15000 bucks or 20000 bucks. That's really stupid. It is stupid. His phone melted. Shit looks good. Had a stroke in between. Did the guy have a stroke? You having baby yesterday? Uh, no way. Ed Diaz? Uh-uh. Plan B omelets for everybody. Where are these idiots coming from? If it's not chopping like a motherfucker, it ain't worth shit. Says, sorry I'm late. Paul M says, drifting is for people who can't build fast drag racing car. Um, okay. What's the price to entry for a drift car? What's the price to entry? So... Fox body, um, boy, you're just slapping your nuts around, huh, buddy? So you, you get a Fox body, right? Yeah, you put an LS in it like a freaking homosexual. You get a, tr- a T56. Suspension doesn't really matter. You get a bar angle kit, and you can generally have fun drifting. But if you want to build a competitive drift car, it's $100,000 plus, Right? Then a hundred thousand plus dollars. So, why would you want to do that? To be at, I, I don't care. I, I, who gives a fuck? Fuck drifting. Fuck drifting. You drift, cool, good for you. Go kiss dudes with herpes. I, I, I just can't. I, I can't subscribe to it. Ever, ever. I'm never, ever in my life gonna go to a drift event. Ever in history. Fuck that. Phone smell like burnt toast. 15, 15 plan beads at Costco. Just saying. Sorry, I'm doing yard work with gloves on. Liar. <laughs> he was stroking his comrade who says comrade and camaraderie if you want sliding you want baseball feet first head first sliding is plentiful well the diff done um price to entry for a drift car is like 50 bucks <laughs> okay is there a built not bought mentality in the drift car community like is there a guy that built a fox body that drifts and says well i I'd be up there sliding around with Vaughn Gittin and Adam LZ if it wasn't for the money. I, I, I don't, I, I don't care. I don't care. See, the built not bought thing would would be funny to me when Coyote guys were going fast. Eleven to fourteen guys started going fast late fourteen because a lot of the tuning got figured out. A lot of the power riders came around. A lot of the turbo stuff came around, and they started you know early Gen two, late Gen one Coyote. They still really started moving out. Then the LS guys were butthurt because they were shoving LSs in swap cars like a Fox Body or a Malibu or whatever. And they weren't keeping up with a brand new, out of the box, shiny Coyote with boost. You weren't. I'm sorry. I've been out there. I've seen what you guys were trying to do. Maybe from a dig. But in Houston, you guys were trying to build everything and anything, and these boosted coyotes were fucking you up. So much so that we stopped even fucking with Camaros and we started racing Corvettes. And then the Z06s got it, but the ZR1s were always top dog. They were actually, you know, real tough to beat with a boosted coyote until recently. Right now, if you have an ESS G3X 100mm 10R80 E85 coyote, you have a serious car that can compete with Corvettes, ZR1s, and most roll cars because it's a serious 460, 470, 60 to 130 car. Yes, it's not a two second car, but the price to entry for a four second car is a Gen 3 Auto Mustang stock trans ESS G3X 100mm pulley fuel system. Bada bing, bada boom. You have a 4 second 60 to 130 car. So that's where the, oh, well, you just used daddy's money to buy a Mustang and bought a blower and just bolted it on and you were instantly fast. Whereas the LS guys were doing everything and anything possible, having 16 junkyard engines trying to, you know, make ends meet and go out there every weekend and compete and brand new Mustangs were rolling the streets for a little while. And then, you know, Obviously, things like BMWs came to play. Things like um, the newer LT Camaros came to play. And those cars really started rolling out nicely. It's not gay until it's invested in a... I had a friend that ended up with my... 
too 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 long. Super Dad says Shinobi lovers, look up Mr. FPGA. It's a DIY build that emulates the hardware of an old system. I've got Shinobi arcade console versions of it, easy and works perfect. Cool story. I'm literally cleaning my yard. Sorry, mate. It's all good, cool car, dude. Best shape of fool's joke I heard. Do you see that the S650 was finally tunable? Cameron Summer says, you can take five to $15,000 to have a competition drift car. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because I've seen a lot of guys that try to get into drag racing. Like the guy the other day that said, how wide of a tire is too wide for roll racing? And I said, what? So there are guys that don't even understand racing at all. Like the suspension aspect. The um, Like this is what people do now. They look for kits. Kits, 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 kits. Whipple, kit. Put it on. Four Innovations, kit. Put it on. Stop the hop, kit. Put it on. Suspension dampening, kit. Put it on. Go to the track. Hey, this thing sucks. I bought all the right stuff and it fucking sucks. Now is where the knowledge comes in. Now is where weight bias comes in. Now is where scaling the car comes in. Now is where adjusting the dampening comes in. Tire pressure comes in. Tuning comes in. Converter selection comes in. And that's where they go, fuck that. Let me just slide sideways, door to door with my Kamadi. And that's going to be more fun for 15000 bucks. Tony's episode now. Yeah, Tony's the man. Tony's been so good. Tony's been just super awesome. I have not had... <laughs> he looks so psycho. He, the, the guy's just been super solid. He has to go to the vet soon because, you know, just a regular checkup. But he's been just... You, it's caught on your foot, dumbass. It's caught on your foot. You're so stupid. There. He's not a smart dog. Definitely not a smart dog. I used to have a Fox body. I bought his first car and eventually want to kind of swap it. And when I get the money, should I save for six already or 10 already first? <sighs> what engine are you going to use? You cannot use a Gen 2 motor with a 10R80. You cannot use a Gen 3 motor with a 6R80. You understand? Please tell me you understand. What should a 10R80 G3X 120mm pulley on C16 run in the quarter? Okay, let's say, for example, C16, which is leaded, so your O2s are going to burn up pretty quick. But let's say I'm able to shove 22 degrees of timing because it's only 120mm pulley. And let's say stock converter, free-flowing exhaust, and you got good axles in it. 980, 980, 970, I think it can run on that exact same setup. Tony always looks like he's on that good stuff. It's not gay until you sit on the internet and bitch about it. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you're, you're on the Lunds going to... No, the Lund. no, no. I'm. Why the fuck would I go to that? My, uh, how can I teach these kids? I don't give a fuck about racing. I don't give two shits about racing. Maybe Junior will go and check it out because, you know, maybe we might have a customer or two. But I personally don't give a fucking shit about racing. Track day guys run circles around drift. Fuck Coke car, dude. Lee Presley, low 11s if you're running stock tires. Uh, not on C16, JD Swag. Don't know if you want if I want to see 6GS or a Gen 2 Coyote for the next car though. Just one on nine second street car, nothing crazy. You were okay. I think an automatic Corvette C6. Wait, do they have? Guys, put me on game. Put me on game. Is there a C6 auto, like Grand Sport or something? Something that has a decent motor in it, like an LS3. You could probably put good heads in a cam in it and, and a blower and run nines on E85. Is that a thing? Like an automatic, and what transmission is it? Like a 4L something or a 6L80 or 6L60? Like that sounds favorable, but what's the price to entry on that? If the price to entry on a C6 automatic Corvette with a 6L, 80, 60, whatever the fuck it is. I have no idea, okay? And you can get an LS3 that's decent, and you can put some heads, cam, and a blower on it and run nines. The problem is now you got to open up the motor. So, 
does that setup cost the same as a Gen 2 or 3 Coyote with a blower? I would rather get the Coyote, but the Corvette is lighter. But the Corvette's motor is not nearly as good as the Gen 2 and up Coyote. So you got to weigh out the options. What do you want to do? Auto Grand Sport doesn't have the hand-built engine or dry sump system. Elva Galarga says, or Elver Galarga says, before we talk about build versus bought, let's first break down what a build is. Up to a point, kind of feels like replacement parts, not a build. Okay, that's very good. A build to me is you have a Fox body. There's a Fox body. You put the cage in yourself. You get the motor built somewhere, like a good motor. You could put that in, but then let's say you put a... Uh, engine plate on it and you fab that up put a turbo 400 behind it put a 300 shot you get a uh, relocation kit for the torque boxes or a um, what do you call it a, a reinforcement kit or you get the trz or name your whoever the fuck company make them you know have adjustable mounting points you get all that set up you cut the nine inch ends of the rear end yourself you get the axles you do the work as opposed to I bought a rolling chassis. I bought the trans and and everything and, and the shop put it together. And the shop put the engine in, trans in, rear end in, put Holly on it, and handed you the keys to a car that needs tuning and track time and, and suspension adjustments. That would be bought. Right? I, in my opinion. And I don't think either is bad. I just think that would be the distinction between the both. Can you address my supercharger earlier, boss man? Just ask the question again. Ask the question 15 times if you have to. I'm a busy guy. There's 700 people or 600, 550 people on whatever. Ask the question again. Don't ask me to go back because I'm going to get lost in the sauce. Mid mileage C625 grand HCI package, 4500 LSA blower, 5000 in a fuel system and install another case. So a C6 is 25,000 bucks, grand sport. Head cam package. Intake is 4,500, LSA blower, 5,500, and another fuel system. So you're into it for about 29, 35, so almost 40,000 bucks. C6 GS is basically a rolling shell of a Z06 with engine and trans from a base model C6. Well, why don't you stuff a coyote in it then? Has anyone even tried that? I know there's a Z01 guy that posted a picture of a coyote in a white Z01. Never heard from him again. But I'd love to get myself a blue Grand Sport. 6R80 Coyote swap the bitch. But does that have the torque tube and all that shit there, there, there too? I don't know. You tell me. I have no idea. Boy, that's a good idea. Let's do that. So let's... So 2012? Let me see. Uh, cars, uh, car gurus? Car gurus? I wonder if that could be a good good project in the future. So what? A 2012? Uh, 2012? Because that would be a build. <laughs> Okay, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I fucking hate this. Uh, buy, uh, okay, uh, uh, mix, uh, Chevy, Chevrolet, Corvette, da, 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 Corvette, uh, price, uh, 15000 to twenty twenty seven five. Jesus Christ, twenty seven five. Uh, radius, uh, nationwide, search. And it's going to ask for years, right? I hope. Uh, da, 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 filters, filters. I like the filters on the left. Uh, is there other filters? There we go. Da, da, da. So let's say 2010 to 2012, right? 2010 to 2012. Mm, 2012. Come on, bitch. There we go. And it's got to be automatic. Automatic. 28. Let's go. Okay. Uh no 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 oh yeah like this blue color i like i like uh it's like a blueish color twenty three thousand dollars for an 11 one lt convertible boy but you're basically gonna, gonna gut the trans out of it so does anyone know if there's a rolling chassis for a c6 narrow body deal that like you know needs a trans and a, and a motor and stuff a coyote in it with a 6r80 and run an actual number oh my god that would, it's not gonna piss anybody off i think it'd be cool crazy um, what recipe for a four second Gen 2 6? Uh, I've asked, I, I've answered this question from Daniel Green 15 different ways, 15 different times. And I love you. I've answered this question so many fucking times. You tried it with the GT250 stuff. 
I mean, you you have been like like redundant, and I love you. Oh my God, why do you want to hear it a different way? It regardless of what you need to do, a four second car six R eighty. Regardless if it's three two two, Gen two, whatever, you need about eight hundred or nine hundred real world horsepower to to run four sixty to one thirty. In any car weighing thirty eight hundred pounds or more, you need eight hundred to nine hundred rear wheel horsepower to run fours sixty to one thirty. Always, regardless if it's three two two, regardless if the gear ratio, it don't fucking matter. Eight to nine hundred real world horsepower. Boost E85, whatever that accommodates or you need. Choose Whipple, Turbo, ESS, Edelbrock. It does not matter. It's just like the same shit over and over and over. There is no special sauce because of the 331s, the 322, or the 6R80. It's a power to weight thing forever in history. I, 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 I know I sound like a fucking asshole, but I've said it 15 times. Like 15 times. Sheesh. C601 and a C606 have aluminum hydroform frame chassis. They're lighter and than the C6GS. The GS is still a good platform, though. That'd be interesting. I do both bought and built, says 313 Mike N. Most people nowadays buy to fit in a car, but can't drive or don't know what they really have. I only bring it up because I see people say drop the wheels and exhaust aren't a build. But then they say it's a build when all they have is a power adder. Um... But isn't it though? See, build took on a completely different definition in modern car times. Completely different definition. Back in the Fox body days, you had to build it. You had to put, you know, uh, reinforce the unibody. You had to build the motor. You had to do something to the trans. You had to do something to the rear end. So back in the day, you had to build it. In modern times, building it is putting a blower on it and a fuel system. That doesn't take away from the fact that it is easier, but it's still a build. It's still a build. You just have to do more to a Fox body and an SN and a uh, Cobra and all those cars to make it run a number. Whereas in modern times, you're an ESS kit, Whipple blower. And the two and an E85 away from stupid fast times. Blame the technology. Because if you're 20 years old, you're a kid, and you've been listening to the show for four years since you were 15 or 16, and now you're ready to get after it, and you want to go fours in the 60 to 130, are you going to buy a Fox body, chop it up, put an LS in it, or put a Coyote in it, 6R80, control pack, fuel system, rear rent, no, you're going to take out a loan. You're going to pay six or 700 bucks a month. You're going to finance a blower kit and a fuel system, have a shop, put it together, have Lund tune it. And you are now every month paying about 1100 bucks for a car that runs a ridiculous number. And the labor is minimal to nothing. But that's what kids know nowadays. You understand? Kids nowadays don't have a shop class. Kids nowadays don't have a woodworking class in their high school, all right? Unless they go to a tech school or something like that. But that's what they think is a build. Whereas guys like my age go, that's not a build. You bolt it on three or four parts, but then full stop. That is a build to them. To them, that's a build. Back in my day, exactly, Johnny Trans. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but kids nowadays have it a lot easier than we did. You can't hate them for being born in an era of like ridiculously easy attainable goals. Like a BMW is gay as shit. Can you go fast in it? Of course. A lot easier than most Mustang stuff. Tune downpipe and mommy can pay for the fucking bill. It's a build. Hey, what'd you do to run nines in it? E50 with my lab coat, downpipes, and a tune from some Russian. Oh, that's all it took? Yes, that's a build. Sorry that it took $20,000, LS swaps, six junkyard engines for your car to go the number that the BMW goes. I'm sorry. He was just born in a different era. Um, hey, anyone with it? Anyone win with 
anyone win the Amory yet? No, I'm going to do it at 9 o'clock. We're about a minute away. Uh, it's going to be uh, Star Trek trivia. So go ahead and get your phones ready. Go ahead and start looking up Star Trek trivia. And the and, and the and in this thing that I'm going to ask, the answer has to be ridiculously correct. There can't be any deviation. I'm going to ask for something, and the answer has to be ridiculously accurate. It can't be gen, gen, general, generic answers for it. Back in, back in my day, making 400 horsepower with the Fox was nasty, bro. Nowadays, you know. Got to go back to work. I'll catch y'all later. Thank you, sir. The future is now, old man. Exactly. For me, a build is putting your hands on every part of the engine. Drive to suspension, brakes and tear it. No, stop. That's crazy. That guy has way too much time and the car's slow. That guy has way too much time. Do you have enough time to do all that? And if you do, it's going to take you years and years and years to get that thing done. Andrew says, I'm 20 and I can do the work myself, but, but my own place is better than a fast car. Um, yes, you can go buy a nine-second car on payments. Valley 10 Speed. What's up, Valley 10 Speed? You had people fooled that you crashed your shit. Make a big power a lot easier now. Johnny Trends, remember when 400, 500 horsepower would kill just about anything? Back then when converters didn't work and people were putting 456 gears behind overdrive transmissions. Look, the Fox body is relevant. My Fox body NA runs 860 to 130. It ran 1070 NA. But when you think about it, it's a big inch Windsor. And to duplicate that build, think about it. Let's say you want to duplicate my white Fox body build. You're going to spend 25,000 bucks. You're going to spend 12 to 15 on a built 427 or 408. You're going to, you're going to spend 10 on a rolling chassis. You're going to spend whatever on a, on a TR, on a, on a Tremec, clutch, rear end, C clip eliminators, subframe connectors. Like, like, that's a lot of money. So that's cash. You can't finance that. You got to go get a Fox. You can't finance a Fox. You can't finance a motor build unless the shop is crazy. So generally to duplicate the build that I have in the Fox body, it's like over 20,000 bucks and it's a 1070 car. Come on, stop it. Alex, when you put it on three kit on your third time, you're officially built. That's actually pretty funny. Um, kids nowadays buy a car, send it to a shop, tuner tunes it, car has launch control and shifts itself. Oh, and they beat their chest off of how much of a bad motherfucker they are. You're not wrong. But that's just, the same could be said about pro mod guys. Right, Killshot? Think about it. What you just said, you can take it all the way to the highest level and have a direct correlation with what you just said. Buy a car, rolling chassis, send it to a shop. They do the thing. The tuner tunes it. They get in it. Boom, 379 at 202 in the eighth. I mean, think about it. Pro mod guys are the same way. Remember back in the day when people would claim less horsepower than they actually made? Ah, they still do that with time slips. It's gay. Kokar dude says, that's why I'm part of my drift build. Uh, get out of here with your drift build. Uh, I love hearing old school terms, bro. Yes, and those bitches worked. Our school system had a diesel program, three years of courses, and it took... And it set me up for the first job I have now. When I was growing up, maybe, I don't know if there are still technical, technical schools out there. It was at Dean Technical High School in, in uh, Holyoke. That's where all the nasty Puerto Ricans went from the south, south of Holyoke. Real nasty Puerto Rican. But they'd take a shop class and then machine shops in the area would hire them. Obviously for pennies on the dollar because they're high school kids. But they'd have an intern program. Then they'd hire them and then they'd become full-time employees of said machine shops. So you could, or Jerry Rome Nissan would hire them right from the auto shop of the technical high school. Still stupid, but it's uh, but so is all motorsports. You can go fast with minimal stuff in a Fox 5.0 Tussin. Draggy racing. Sauce to get into the Forge. Eighth mile on an F-150. Eighth mile F-150? Did you say eighth mile F-150? You know that's like a low eight, high seven second car. Actually, mid seven second car in the quarter mile. And you're talking about how to do it with a F-150? So a turbo 400 and 2,000 horsepower because the truck's going to be 4,000 pounds. <laughs> like it's insanely difficult. Okay, let's give away today the YDBT misspelled one of one tumbler that was supposed to be spelled Amory, right? This is the correct spelling, Amory, and they misspelled it. But I think it's funny that we're going to give it away. Star Trek trivia. Again, the, I'm going to prioritize the members. But you have to spell this 
so good. You have to it ha, the spelling has to be on the money. I don't want anyone begin all whatever. Um, but what was Alexander's mother's name? And the spelling has to be on the money. What was Alexander's mother's name? Go. First one that gets it. And if it's a tie or whatever, I will give it to the um, uh, member because I want to make sure that, you know, I prioritize the actual people that pay to, uh, you know, have their little thing there. Someone says, Lower Rocket Man. You got to spell it exactly correctly. There cannot be. So, what is Alexander's mother's name? That's like Worf's son. What is his mother's name? Oh, this is a good one. Uh, ooh, 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 almost, almost low 99, but you misspelled it slightly. You misspelled it slightly. You misspelled it too. Oh, you guys are misspelling it. You guys are not spelling it properly. Good, dude, you guys are not spelling it properly. I'm waiting for the one that has it properly. Wow, you guys are not spelling it right. Unless the one I'm seeing is wrong. Everyone's saying Kalar, but you're putting, it's not spelled right. I love you guys. It's not, I'm looking at all of the Kalars. And none of them are spelled right. I love that you put the apostrophe in there too. But no one is spelling it right. But I'm going to go back and make sure. Because the first one was slow 99. No one has it. No one has it. No one has it. We Googled it. Okay, you Googled it. But I'm going to show you what I see. Okay? This is what I see right here. K-L-A-R. With L-A-Y-R. Exactly. K apostrophe E H L A. Y R. Now, this could be wrong, but let me go all the way up and make sure that Slow99, who I think was the first one that said it, uh, would win if that is the case. Let me see. Uh, it's sad. It's sad. Princess. So Slow99 was the first one, but he went K-E-H-L-E-Y-R. So let me actually type in here. What is Alexander's mother's name? <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> ah, so it is a bunch of, yeah, you guys are correct. Alexander Roshenko's mom is Kayla with an E, and the, the uh, site I was referencing was incorrect, but luckily we got Slow 99 right here. Slow 99 right here was the first one that said something, so I will give it to Mr. Slow 99, and he is a member that makes my life easier, so apparently the uh, website I was referencing was incorrect, but doesn't matter because Slow 99 got it first, so good for you, Mr. Slow 99, you will be getting a, the white, the only YDBT Tumblr that says ARMY on it, so you can actually go to car meets and be like, I have the actual army uh alex tumblr so if you want me to sign it i can someone said to sign it if you want me to sign it on the bottom i can I, and i'll throw a nice little prize inside here uh, there, it has um a dna hat performance sticker already inside it has a little thank you tumblr but i'm also going to throw a nice little prize in there too so slow 99 do me a favor hit me up at ydbt for life at gmail.com verify who you are and I will ship you the misspelled Tumblr, YDBT Army Tumblr. Congratulations. Love it, love it, love it. Daniel Green, here we go. <laughs> Gen 2, MT82, ESSG2, or 2.3? Just want something boosted. I do not race. What for fuel kit level injector? 93 pump mostly. Okay. If you're going to see a 93 pump, you don't need a fuel system. If you want a Gen, if you have a Gen 2, MT82 car, find yourself a Roush 2.3 blower. Use the complete kit, the 110 millimeter pulley, the 80, uh, the, the 110 millimeter uh, cold air, or 100, yeah, 110 millimeter cold air, 82 millimeter upper, um, twin 60 throttle body stock, twin 60 throttle body, stock lower, and you get yourself MU52 injectors from Ford Performance, and you, you will have a car that makes 610 to 630 rear wheel horsepower. You get yourself a booster pump from VMP or Vortec or uh, JMS, and that bitch is done. That bitch is done. YDBT for life at gmail.com, slow99. Hit me up there. Congratulations. I love the fact that you want something there. I just bought my first 18 Coyote about a month ago. Any suggestions on getting to a 500 horsepower NA? I see so much conflicting info. So Oz, I'll be honest with you. The only way I've seen this car make 500 
rear wheel horsepower NA. It's a manual CJ cammed car. I know, I know. A lot of you guys are going to say, but what about the video that I saw that VMP made? But what I saw the video that uh, Lund Racing did it with the JLT in the 85? I'm sorry, this is the combination. Manual, CJ, not the gen, not the version 2 CJ, the old school CJ, manifold. Twin 65 millimeter or unfortunately twin 69 from VMP. You're probably going to have to go through three of them to get a good one. Comp cams 422430s. I think it's 422430s or 433420, whatever Valley 10 speed has. Valley 10 speed. Tell me what cams are in your car. I think it's the 433420s or 422430s. Comp cam stage two cams on your Coyote for a Gen 3. So, CJ, twin 60, twin board throttle body, P mass cold air, cams E85. That will make 510 or so rear wheel horsepower free flowing exhaust headers from ultimate header and the car should make close to 500 rural horsepower <laughs> five slow says super chat but he actually doesn't actually pay for a super chat what is a decently safe boost level for a voodoo on octane booster with long tube headers and no cats I'm seeing eight to nine pounds 800 rural horsepower and i think i'm gonna leave it that's it mike h you got it 800 horsepower nine pounds of boost with octane booster Vaya con Dios, safe. The motor's chilling. You're not stressing anything out. It should last you a very, very long time. You have the right combo, in my opinion. Why is the V2 CJ so bad? JD Swag says the 422 430s, and someone says 433 430s. Which one is it? I forget. I'm going to have to ask uh, Valley 10 Speed which one it is. Alex says this guy spent enough money for a better build asking the same questions. What power should I make on the ESS G3X? 110 millimeter pulley, 85. 10 already car. Looking forward to getting tuned by you guys. 800 plus. 110 millimeter pulley. I'm sorry. High 700s, low 800s. Only because the auto shows a little bit less power than the manual. Mr. Prime. But the car with 110 millimeter pulley should be a 950, 960 car in the quarter mile. Second gear leave. No problem. In good air. Not in the middle of summer. Speaking of cams, Alex, make that the whiteboard video. That's going to be so long. I... I First, I can't draw, okay? So I'm going to have to get that on, on you know, uh, um, get my game on with the drawing. Second of all, I have to do a lot more talking to Jake and Junior so that they can talk to me and I can then explain it in a simple way because I can give you the technical aspects, but it won't be the way I explain things. And I think you'll get lost in the sauce, to be honest with you. Um, you got it, Mike H. Yeah, you got the combo down pat. You did perfect. Look. GT350, 10 pounds of boost, good octane. That bitch is perfect. It's the perfect car. Now that Ben Calmer fucks with the 3160, you get a Ben Calmer 3160, a good vengeance clutch, a good drive shaft and axles, and that bitch is perfection. Last you a long time. Beat the shit out of many cars you shouldn't be beating up, and it's only 10 pounds of boost. It's just awesome. Remember the video made with the red car idle issue? Did you ever find the issue? VCT, you mean white car? Which engine controller is best for Coyote Swap, PBR, or Ford Racing? Both are similar. Both get the same tune. I really bought a money pit buying my Fox. Luckily, I have two years to build the damn thing when I can get my driver's license. But this is going to be expensive. When I run nines in my Fox, I think people are... I think... Okay, I'm hoping it runs nines and nothing blows up. Knock on wood. But I think people are going to go, that car is a nine-second car right now. Right now. It's a Fox. I'm going to put it up for sale, and people are going to probably have a bidding war. I love the car. It's cool, but I need to cash out some of the stuff. I need to be up money so I can get that Fairmont popping. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyone notice how once the giveaway was over, the stream lost 30-plus viewers? It happens all the time. Nice shirt. Bumble swipes? Not yet. Not not for a while. I just sent the ID picture to your email. Thanks again, man. Slow 99, you got it. I'll probably throw a, a C note in there. I'll probably throw a little C note in there just for the hell of it. You know, 100 bucks just to say, hey, you go. Here's a tumbler and 100 bucks and do whatever the fuck you want with it. I'm here. Who needs some love? It says P Diddle Diddy. You know, I don't know. I'm kind of missing the fact that I haven't played that sound clip yet. So we have to just get back on the game. Oh, I can't believe that. 
ah, I'm just blown away by that whole that, that, that whole situation. The fact that it's looking dodge years were rough. It's either build dodge GLH on me's or sell my booty hole for twenty bucks a pop. <laughs> Man, every time I see my signature on shit like suitcases and cereal boxes and chili, it makes me think, why didn't I marry my college boy? Uh, you know, why does it cut it off at boyfriend? College boyfriend. <laughs> it's so weird to me. Wait, Dodge was pushing people's shit in? Why didn't anyone let me know? God fucking damn it! Valley Tensby said it's 433430. The only Shelby truck I had anything to do with was the Dodge Shelby Durango in Dakota. Those are more Shelby than any F-150 piece of shit. Exactly, I agree. Man, I could go for tall glass of Mexican dick right now. I wish I was alive when, when the shitster was invented. I'd have never gotten out of my car to blow your dad in the weeds. You know what else I was blowing off in the weeds? Your dad. People right now go, Alex, my kids are watching. Why are your kids watching this show? It's, it's, it's not. It, it's because it's. it's my mother's watching. How dare you? What is that sound he's playing? Bro, you can hear the Philly in Meek's voice. Exactly. That sound clip has a lot to unpack. Hey, oh. Thanks for the fake Carol Shelby. <laughs> ah, look at what Hoodie said. Oh, 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 I've never made those noises. And a girl I don't think has ever made similar noises with me in bed. You know, like that, that must have been intense. <laughs> wow. I ran to turn the volume down so my mom wouldn't hear. How many people has Diddy done that to? Where's Justin? Oh, stop. <laughs> stop it. I wonder how the conversation between Jay-Z and Beyonce when she found out about Petey. Diddy, Diddy. Alex made a remix. You can hear the meat in Cheek's voice. <laughs> in Meek's voice. Why can't 10 or 80 be used with a Gen 2? Yes. Fives. There is no 10 or 80. Okay. I think I understand why a lot of people ask this question. <clears throat> you guys think that the... You guys... <laughs> you guys think that the 10 or 80 and 6 or 80 are controlled by a TCM. Transmission Control Module. No. The computer that controls the engine also controls... The shifting on the transmission. That's why a Gen 3 computer cannot be used with a 6R80. Because in the Gen 3 computer, it has a 10R80 indexed. So how are you going to make... Oh, let me just delete a gear. No. Same thing the other way. You can't take a Gen 2 computer and put a 10R80 behind it. Because now you got to add four gears somehow. Cannot do it. Gen 3, 10 R80, Gen 2, 6 R80. That's just how it works. There is no separate transmission control module. Now I need to auction the thunder you licked on the top. Okay. Tumblr, you licked on the top. Got it. Can you cap? You saying you never said the N-word in bed? I I <laughs> I have never said the N-word in bed. But Meek Mill just, you know, and, and it's the familiar one. So you know it was a friendly thing. Oh, 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 oh. Fuck that S N word. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'd be honored if I was with someone and they said, you know, a, a girl. And they said that to me. Right? If you're in bed, you're like a hood chick. And you're doing such a good job that she says this. Oh, 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 oh. I'd be like, oh, well, thank you very much. I've made it. Meek's been gay since he fumbled the bag with Nikki. The Fairmont had the YDBT lid on the Edelbach 2650. When is Dustin dropping the YDBT lid? Do I have it here? Guys, I, you know, thank you for reminding me. Does anybody want this? Does anybody want the YDBT 2650 TVS? Guys, I have them. I kept them. I still have the YDBT 2650 TVS Edelbrock lid. Do y'all want this? I'll give this shit away right the fuck now. And I'll do another 
contest right the fuck now and give this away. Yes or no? Do you want this? Yes or no? The YDBT E-Force. Uh, these are metal. These are metal. Okay, let's do another giveaway. Da -da 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 -da. Let's do another giveaway. <laughs> another giveaway. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back to Star Trek trivia. We're going to find a question that's very simple. Again, prioritizing the um, prioritizing the members as always. The question is, what modulation frequency do the deflector shields operate on? And it has to be 100% accurate. What modulation frequency do the deflector shields operate on? On the Enterprise, that is for the YDBT 2650. Um, things that go on the E-Force, blah, 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 blah. Again, you have to be deadly accurate. And I'm going to always, always, oh, someone says lol. I'm going to always prioritize the members here. Oh, no, no. It's got to be deadly accurate to the decimal point. It's got to be deadly accurate to the decimal point. Someone said Meek. It's for 100 hertz, for 20 hertz. No, no. The, oh my God, Alfredo Diaz with the Holly Haram logo, 257.4. I think you won something before, but you know what? Fuck it. I know you ain't done it, almost got it, and Hoosier almost got it, y'all, and AJ almost got it, but Alfredo Diaz, and I will show you here so you don't think, um, you don't think I'm screwing you. Right here, Alfredo Diaz got it first, 257.4. Carter's TV said three, someone said 400, someone said 2.9, but Alfredo Diaz, congratulations, you win the uh, YDBT E-Force uh, placards that go on top of the E-Force blower. You probably don't have an E-Force blower, but Alfredo Diaz, I think you won before. Hit me up with your address. You win the YDBT TVS 2650. Little placard things that go on top of E-Force blower. There you go, a couple of giveaways, trying to get uh, stuff out of my house. 25, 257.4 meeks per second. Suzuki, or Six Suki says, but can you put a Gen 3 computer in a Gen to stop? Just stop. Just stop, Six Suki, just stop. Just stop. Gen 2, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 3. Just stop. It's not just a computer change, the connectors are different. The cam connectors are different. The engine harness is different. The cams themselves are different. Stop. Just stop, please. I remember that somehow I'm an electronics technician for some reason. It's buried in my brain. Uncle Alex can give away anything. Uh, I still have the YDBT shift knob from your black S197. You do? Wow, that's crazy. I didn't know that was even a thing. 11, 14, 2300 E-Force versus Roush. I like the Roush way better. Then the E-Force 11 to 14, 2300 version. As far as I know, that one was not able to be pulleyed down or up. It had a different pulley configuration and it didn't have a removable pulley. I think it was like pressed in. So I'm not 100% sure, but when it comes to comparing those two, I'd much rather have the Roush 2300. Who in here is trying to say the N-word in bed? I can make it happen tonight. It says P Diddy Diddy, uh, P Diddle Diddy. Is there any way you can slow me clip so we can calculate the nut to butt ratio? Is there any way you can slow the meek clip? Let me think about that. Okay, you guys, okay, bear with me. Bear with me. I'm going to open Wondershare for more. <laughs> if the computer starts to slow down, <laughs> I think you can. <laughs> I think you can. So if the computer starts to slow down, it's because I'm opening a, a program called Wondershare Filmora. And we'll see. Well, we can do it. Let, let, let's see. Let's end the show. <laughs> AJ says, damn, I refreshed and his was first. Now, fair. I thought I had it. You got it, brother. So new project. And it's <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Import media files. So where is it? Ah, shit. Let me, let me see where where it's located to begin with. Um, Stream Deck, I don't think I can open Stream Deck while it's on, and if it, if I can, oh, it's great, I can, I can. Remind me later of an update. So P. Diddy is on page six, or page three, two, four, four. Location, oh, downloads, Diddy, 
Beautiful. So let's go to Diddy, D-I, D-I-D-D-Y. Uh, there it is. Okay, Diddy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put this on uh, the big screen here. And I'm going to see if I can make it happen live. So hold on. I'm going to try to slow down the Meek clip. Let's play it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so is there a way I can slow this down? Speed ramping? Speed ramping? Let me see. Uh, customize. And let's see. Uh, I'll show you guys live. Fuck it. We'll, we'll, do it. we'll do it all together. So I'm going to see if I can slow down everything. Uh, okay. Okay. Let, let's see if this works. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so let's slow it down. Okay, let's see. Let, let, let's see if we can slow it down. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> let's get to the clapping. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, right here. So let's get to the clapping. It's right here. So we're gonna we're gonna slow it down, <clears throat> and we're gonna see how many claps nut to butt ratio there was. <laughs> I feel like I'm working at CSI. Slow it down and enhance it. <laughs> that is the most foul fucking thing I've ever done in my life. That is so fucking foul, bro. <laughs> that is, what an unbelievable, what an unbelievable waste of technology. <laughs> Could you imagine we have this technology that allows us to do anything. And I was able to isolate the cheek clapping. <laughs> Seven to nine. Uh, <laughs> ah, I'm sweating. Holy shit. Wow. So there you go. Um, the cheek to whatever ratio <laughs> is the higher pitch. Ah. <laughs> Bro, my wife just came downstairs and asked me what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's why this show's good this show isn't good because i'm like funny or dumb stuff i'm able to do what kind of like whatever the fuck i want and who what other car guy can actually step out of that world and actually give you just cheek clapping in slow motion i mean it's great someone said jesus that was awful like don't you feel kind of mad that you've never eaten been able to get a woman to do that for you like at all like it blows my mind alex real question <laughs> Ross 2300 or tvs sloth it depends on what you want to do under 800 horse the 2300 is king above 800 horse you need the 2650 i can't even listen to meek mill music any board nut to butt seven to nine you don't get this anywhere else no wonder aliens won't visit us how many seconds is that clip i want to find out what the beats per minute is and see what song matches that. I think them guts do. What's up? Okay. I don't know the beats per minute of um of that, but I might be able to match it and I can maybe do a clip matching the beats per minute. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Um, yeah, I'll never see hip hop the same. When you find out most of the guys in hip hop were getting rammed by by, by, by P. Diddy, you're like don't talk to me about the trap. Don't talk to me about the struggle. Talk to me about well, while you were getting your cheeks clapped in the trap. Like, please stop it with this trap and tough guy talk when you were getting diddled all day. So I, I hip hop I listen to and I just laugh because I know most of those guys are gay. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. We ended up talking about if the built not bought argument is valid. Even in the race car world, even the pro mod guys, they still buy most of their stuff. Most guys have other cars built in terms of chassis shops, engine building, or what have you. 
Uh, so I think the built not bought argument is more of people that can't afford or would rather just have 100% control of their race car or, or vehicle as opposed to just letting else someone else do it. But I think the, the, the doers, the, the high productivity guys that have money, they have to have someone else build it and they just want to enjoy their vehicle because they don't have the wherewithal, the time or the skills to actually build the car. But I don't see a bought car and think it's any worse than a built car. Both have their place in this game. And then we finished it up by slowing down PDD, Slimy Meek, and it was a good time. I'm out of here. I'm going to be back on Thursday for YDBT Daily. We'll hang out then. We'll see if we can uh, isolate more clips and get the beats per minute matched up and get that clip really popping on the soundboard. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys on Thursday. See you guys later. Bye-bye.